Okay, thank you so much. So nice well, hello, hello, sir. How are you? Good. How are you? So nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you. I love the guitars in the background. That warms my heart. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> As a retired musician. <laughs> well, same here. Retired. But, you know, yeah. I still like to look at them. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, of course, you're you're doing uh, great things uh, in in film, and, and we're 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 so excited for this because this movie is is it's dark, it's deep. There's 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 a lot going on here, and so you got to be excited to unveil this to the world, right? I am, and um, thanks. Yeah, I hope there's a lot going on. You know, you never know. You know, you're kind of working back in like your weird little laboratory, and you have no idea when you release it what people will think. You know. But uh, we, I'm excited about it. We had a lot of fun making it, and uh, and uh, it's a story that I've uh, was been working on for over 15 years. It's a, you know, it's one of those scripts that was like I I couldn't get it made for a long time, and but it would always come back, you know. And it's finally come uh, together, and I'm you know really excited about it. Mm -hmm. And what a cast too! You you had to be just getting excited over and over again, you know, every time that you signed someone else on, right? <laughs> Yeah, you know, it was great. We 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 started with Luke and I'm kind of pragmatic about that. You know, I like to know who, you know, the star, our, our first star is and then kind of build around that, you know, because you're kind of placing you know, every time you get someone, the, the picture kind of comes more into focus and then it makes you um, have a, a stronger opinion about who the next person should be or next actor should be. So it was great. I mean, to, to have Luke, um, you know, I was thrilled. Um, he, I've always been a fan of his work and I think he's just an amazing actor. Um, I love what he does with his, uh, dialects, you know, and working, you know, especially, uh, doing a very specific kind of New York accent. Um, and then again, getting, uh, Rory was, uh, was the second person we brought on, which I loved him. You know, I remember seeing Lords of Chaos and I thought, wow, look at the empathy he brings to this very unlikable character. And, you know, and I have a, a lot of very uh, um, yeah. unlikable, well, characters doing unlikable things. And I needed that kind of empathy that he could bring to that character. And um, and just, you know, everyone, I mean, Alex and uh, and Rudy uh, Pankow was super exciting as Jimmy for me and to see him and Luke and Stephanie kind of come together as a family. We did a, a, a quick, um, you know, before we started getting into the film, we had like a Zoom of the family together. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. And having the, the three of them kind of, um, just kind of talk about uh, and meet each other was so exciting, you know? Oh, that's so cool. And do you have a specific memory from the set where you're just kind of looking around and going, and after 15 years, this is kind of how I envisioned that this is this is how it should be. Well, you know, I envisioned it in New York. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I always imagined I'd be shooting in New York. I remember when the producers were like, you know, I think when they were first, um, you know, you're always trying to find where you're going to do it and how you're going to do it and how you're going to put it all together. And they think they said to me, what do you think of London? I go, I think that's in the UK. What are we yeah. talking about here? You know, um, so we wound up... Um, you know, looking and, and doing a lot of scouting all over um, the UK. And uh, when, when we came upon Manchester, we, we saw that, wow, this is really has the right look and the right feel, the right textures. And it was kind of an exciting, creative challenge for me and for the team, because it was a way we could show New York the way, way we see it. Um, and at the same time, it's something no one else has seen because you've never seen these locations in New York for obvious reasons. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's so cool. Well, you know, people you know, look up at that screen and they, you know, all the time and, and they'll be looking at this going, see, now that's what I want to do. I want to tell, you know, a, a great story and, and, you know, great performances and all that. And so what kind of advice would you give to someone that wants to, you know, put their heart into something because it can take time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think when I look back, I think it's all for me, it was it's all about tenacity. You know, it's, you know, that's the 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 most important thing you can cultivate because even if your project isn't as strong as it could be when you start your um, dedication and commitment to it, you will find people who will help you make it better. You will surround yourself with people who are better than you and can help bring this um, into light. I, I would say, you know, if I made this film when I started, it would be in a different film. I think, you know, the kind of, um, dedication to keep trying to get this thing made 
uh, I think by the time we made it, is a much better film than it would have been. So I think tenacity is the most important thing in any of the creative arts. Yeah. Well, hey, I know you're an East Coaster, but my co-host, uh, Drew Pearson, one of our great Dallas Cowboys, caught the Hail Mary, went in the Hall of Fame. You know, uh, we always love to ask people their Hail Mary moment, which is that moment in your life or career where you just had to go for it. This had to have been it for you, right? Um, you know, I feel like every time I've done anything, it's a Hail Mary. <laughs> you, yeah. know, it's like, you know, because whatever yeah. you're doing, you're just throwing it out into the world. And you know what? It's it, it's still a Hail Mary. Like even after you make it right. And after you've done it and you feel like you you've done everything you could do, then it goes out in the world again. And it's another Hail Mary because you mm -hmm. don't know how people will respond to it. Right. So um, I feel like um, I'm always throwing down there. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, what did you keep in mind? Because, you know, sometimes, I, you know, you, you think you've got it all figured out and then you get on set or, you know, things happen or the weather or who knows what happens, uh, it, you know, it can go wrong. What did you keep in mind? Was there certain mindsets that you that you kept that, that kept things going even when things were tough? Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like my job as director is, um, one of the main things is to, to create and provide an atmosphere where everyone can do their best work. Mm -hmm. So it's really important. You know, I think any director, you know, you, you don't really want to be running around with your hair, hair on fire. You know what I'm saying? You know, because if you're stressed, everyone else is going to be stressed. So I think, uh, it's really important to me to create a really good atmosphere where we have fun and there's a lot of, um, trust and the actors and the crew feel free to bring uh, their best ideas to work. You know, my job is not just putting my ideas on the screen. It's harvesting the best ideas from our entire team, the actors, the, the, the crew, everyone, and trying to get them on that screen in the time that we have. So I think by the time we're shooting, the job shifts, you know, the job shifts about trying to make the most with the time and the resources you have because it, it's never perfect. You are always running into things where you have to make compromises constantly, you know? Um, and you try not to make compromises that hurt the film. You're, you know, my job is to kind of keep, protect the the the, mm -hmm. the intention that we all have in the film, you know? Uh, and not make compromises that are gonna hurt the film, but try to make the compromises that we can, sometimes they make something better, you know? Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of times where, you do something um, and you're run into an obstacle and all of a sudden it looks better. I mean, in certain ways, I feel like where we shot probably made the film look better than if I would have shot it in New York. Because I probably maybe would have been more obvious. I might have picked places that we've already seen. I don't know. But um, some of those challenges kind of make you uh, even be more creative. Yeah. Well, and, and there are a lot of things going on in the film, a lot of themes and uh, you know, it's just said uh, in, in things I believe being said in there, you know, the beyond just the entertainment value. So, so, um, you know, what is it that you're hoping that people will talk about after, after seeing this too, because, um, you know, they're, 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 our characters go through a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, just the fact that, you know, if people talk at all, if you have that kind of, um, impact where somebody has an emotional response to something, I, that's the, the most important thing I try to work on not just the intellectual arc, but the, the you know, the emotional um, arc of it. And, um, and I, you know, I, I, I hope, I hope it's a fun ride, right? But yeah, there's a lot of things that I, I'm always interested about what makes us human, you know, so taking ordinary people and putting them in extraordinary circumstances um, mm -hmm. are things that excite me, you know, things that make me think, how would I act in these situations and put and having that moral a dilemma and complexity that we all kind of run into in different degrees. So those are the things that excite me. And I hope there is kind of some moral kind of things that can be drawn from that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, last thing then, uh, after seeing this, I can't wait to see what you got next for us. You already, I'm, I'm sure you've already been thinking about the other, the next thing, right? Yeah, I do. I do have a, a few projects that I'm yeah. hoping to do. I'm hoping, you know, my film before this was a comedy, and now mm -hmm. this is a uh, this uh, drama thriller action thing, and and then I'm hoping to do something completely different next time, um, just to make it harder on myself. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we love to do that, don't we? <laughs> We're so happy to have you on with us today. This is this is going to be so much fun to talk about because this is, uh, you know, just one of those gritty, you know, crime tales that that did not take place or where you filmed it, not where we thought you did. You're the second person to mention that. They were like, yeah. uh, you, you filmed this in uh, Manchester, but for Brooklyn. Why? Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and I was like, well, do you want the honest answer? They're like, yeah, yeah, tell us. And I said, because if we filmed in Brooklyn, it would cost us about $4 million more to make the movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah. but it turned out it turned out so well and was perfect for the time period and, and you got to be so proud of this one and, and excited to talk about it and see it come out in the world right yeah I'm, I'm very I'm very happy I'm very proud it's uh yeah. it's a it's a great movie it's um it's got some real uh interesting themes redemption it's uh about acceptance uh, i hate the word revenge but it has elements of that in it um which i don't think is necessarily a positive um but it shows you that what the repercussions are if you take vengeful action against people and it's not positive and so it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a hard movie um yeah very entertaining but um but a, a beautiful, beautiful themes that run through the film. Yeah. Well, and also, you know, the thing about something like this that does have so many heavy scenes, you got to keep it light on the set. And from what I understand, in a pretty good time filming it, right? I, I mean, I was there very minimal. I was there like four or five days. I was at the tail end. Um, uh, but I had an um, amazing time. Like uh, as far as my craft and as far as like... Uh, uh, what I got out of it as an actor, um, uh, it was probably one of the one of the best experiences actually yeah. acting uh, that I've ever had. You know, yeah. Well, and, and you've been doing this at such a high level for years now since you came out of the gate, and and, uh, and so we're always excited to see whatever it is that you come out and people look up at that screen and they go, "That's what I want to do." But it's certainly harder than you might think. So, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who wants to follow in your footsteps? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no competition. <laughs> I love that you say it's such a high level. I was like, uh, is it a high level? I mean, uh, yeah. I'm just I, I'm so unaware. That's the that's the that's I, I just don't know what is high level or low level. Or I'm just so grateful to make movies. I can't, I can't even explain it to you. It's so hard to make a film, um, and for all the components to come together. It's um, it's a blessing to be on a on a film set. It really is. Um, so my advice to anyone is uh, that wants to be involved in film is you have you have now three cameras on your phone, and uh, do not um, do not ever put the projection of what success is in the hands of others. You know, success is your own feet and your own experience, and um, the experiences that you get through making film, writing a book, writing a poem, taking a photo, that's what you should be focused on. And if you can find success in those singular experiences and are present in those, you will, um, you will evolve as an artist. Yeah. Well said. You know, my co-host Drew Pearson is one of our great Dallas Cowboys, uh, caught the Hail Mary, went in the hall of fame. And of course, you know, whether or not you follow all that, everybody knows the Hail Mary term by now. So he wanted me to make sure that I asked you your Hail Mary moment, which is that moment in your life or career where you just kind of had to go for it and it worked out for you. What do you suppose that was for you? Um, I, the first thing that comes to mind is um, I auditioned for uh, I Am Number Four. Yes. This, this, is, this, this is actually a funny story. And I had read Heath Ledger's um, uh, autobiography when he went for a Patriot, you remember he did the Patriot yes. with Mel Gibson and he went into the audition and he basically said, I'm not right for this and left. And they were like, so flabbergasted by the fact that this, you know, beautiful young man kind of was like, actually, I'm not right for this. I'm going to leave. Um, they offered him the part. <clears throat> and at the time I, uh, when I went for the I'm number four audition, I was, very, very green, very nervous, really, really, really 
I would I would go into a room of any um, casting and wouldn't remember my lines. I would f flutter and kind of be very overwhelmed. Um, and so I remember going into my I Am Number 4 audition and I went mind blank. I literally was, DJ Caruso was there. I was, I was like completely mind blank as I walked in and I was like, I, I can't remember any of my lines. I had like seven pages. And I looked at all of them and I, because I had been reading the book, not that I did it to in, it, it, uh, 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 copy uh, uh, the process of what Heath Ledger did for The Patriot, but I basically said, oh, I'm, I'm not right for this. But it was an excuse. I just, I was like, I was so nervous and I didn't want to make a fool of myself again. I said, look, I'm, I, I just don't think I'm right for this. And um, like, I really apologize that I wasted your time and, and I'm very grateful that you, that you wanted to see me, but thank you, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. And I left. And I, and I swear, one hour later, they offered me the movie. Literally, one hour later. Didn't even read. Didn't even read. If that's the only time I've ever had that ever happen in my career, and I wouldn't advise that yeah. to anyone. Yeah. But for whatever, the 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 the, uh, the luck of the universe um, placed that opportunity. And that was my Hail Mary, because, um, you know, working with DJ and working on that movie, which yeah. was Michael Bay and Steven Spielberg, <laughs> You know, um, that was my uh, Hail Mary and, and really uh, uh, the start of a, uh, uh, a learning curve for me, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, it, it, the funny thing is we talk about that success mindset that you have to have, whether or not you're feeling it or not. But it's but sometimes it's the opposite. You know, it's, we're so hard on ourselves as creative people. And so is there something that you kind of keep in mind that kind of keeps you on that right path, even when things are tough? Um. Well, it goes back to my point in what do we measure success in, you know, yeah. and I measure success in experience. Yeah. I measure the uh, the success in what am I getting from this experience, not from financial gain, not from notoriety, not from like praise from others. Like I genuinely, I not that I'm being egotistical in this. I just don't care what someone else has to say because it, I get no benefit from that. Uh, we, we can all go look at a painting uh, and have a completely a hundred people can have a hundred different views on what that painting is. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking for success through notoriety or financial, then we're already at a minus one. So um, if you can look at success based on experience and growth in perception mm -hmm. of what you are enduring in that moment, then you'll never have a, 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 a down moment. You know, you'll never have a moment of, of, what am I doing? You, you, you're just searching for the new experience to have growth in. Yeah, well said. Well, your success keeps growing and, and you've got a lot of good stuff coming out, uh, including what? The new Guy Ritchie movie, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's going to be pretty The fun. Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's what a title. And, yeah, and that, that, that must have been a whole lot of fun too, right? Oh my, just what, what a, what a cast, what a crew, what a director. I mean, to be working alongside, I, I actually say working alongside, but I actually had one scene with uh, Aza Gonzalez. She's, she's a, a, an incredible talent. And, um, and then to be able to work alongside Henry Cavill and Henry Golding, Hero Finds yeah. Tiffin, and Alan Richardson, like, I mean, these guys are just, I mean, I, there's no words for the amount of admiration I have for all of them and the love that I have for them as brothers. Um, but just to make a movie with those people, I'm very, very blessed. And Guy, I, I mean, I don't need to explain. I mean, Guy is an auteur. He is a poet, an architect. He is a he is a genius filmmaker. And um, this is a wild, wild movie and a very... <laughs> very 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 fun film yeah i love it well we can't wait for that one well last thing about this one what is it that you uh that you think you'll always remember about either being on this one or something that stands out to you about it that makes it special and will stay with you forever on, on five pounds yes mm -hmm. um something that would be the, i think working with rory i yeah. think he was such yeah. a yeah I think like Rory is such a gifted actor and um, his ability to create this safe space for this thin line of like having the ability to also um, 
play you know and yeah. have no boundaries and where you want to take a scene it, it was some of the most liberating f filmmaking or acting I've, I've done in my career and and felt completely compelled by the work that I or satisfied with the work that I was yeah. doing which you, you don't always necessarily um, feel when you yeah. are working you want to perfect you want to grow you know um, but yeah I, 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 I'll take away that some of the some of the most enjoyable work at, at, as in the acting of what I was doing uh, I've ever I've ever had I uh, love that. Well, we really, really enjoyed it. We thank you so much for your time, the great answers. And I definitely look forward to talking to you again soon and, and have a great time in Paris. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it.